Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Alan Asher Photography. Joining me tonight underneath these wonderful clear skies we've been having as we dive deep into the Cygnus constellation to a uh, all-time favorite of mine as well, especially in that constellation. We're going to be going after the Crescent Nebula or NGC 6888. Now I gotta say, I have been extremely spoiled here over the past like 10 days or so. We've had this major area of high pressure that is also causing the Eastern United States heat wave right now. We've had temperatures in the 90s just about every single day, but what it did bring is a episode of nothing but clear skies. The past now, tonight will be the 10th night in a row. I haven't done much in a way of videos because I have been flopping back and forth between you know imaging and that'll be a, just a lot of videos all at one time to kind of edit through and will kind of get a little bit repetitive so i've been picking and choosing and plus i started doing the uh teaching with the virginia space flight academy's uh, space adventure camp that is started off this week and every single week on wednesday so i'll have some videos regarding you know the activities that we're doing underneath the night sky with all of my students each and every week for the next six weeks so lots of exciting things are going to be happening here over the next couple of weeks even though many areas are suffering from the heat especially across the eastern united states it hasn't been too terribly bad here the humidity hasn't been as bad but i know areas further north and west towards the great lakes have been dealing with some pretty dangerous heat but it'll be our turn now this weekend when it comes to it but I've been absolutely enjoying it because it is a very rare thing to get this many clear skies here in the eastern United States unless you have a really massive area of high pressure across, you know, most of the east coast, New England, even all the way down towards areas of the south and east. And to have this many clear skies, you got to take advantage of it. It's just the one bad thing I hate is uh, we've been dealing with the moon. So I have been looking to do a lot of narrowband targets because that's about the only thing and especially tonight for this one here i've already started this project last night of the crescent nebula but i'm going to be continuing it tonight but tonight is a full moon so really got to use narrowband and it's a pretty bright one too at that now i have been getting accustomed to using this brand new pier and the explorer scientific has been definitely getting a workout here over these past couple of days and the pier has been working great the tracking has been the best i have ever seen it usually every single night since we've had some pretty decent seeing too i mean there's not much of a jet stream nearby so i've been guiding about 0 0.3 arc seconds so it's been pretty darn good with this setup here and this is exactly what i'm going to be using again for tonight now tonight capturing the crescent nebula I'm going to be using my 102 millimeter Explore Scientific triplet refractor, which has a focal length of about 714, but I am using a Starfield Optics reducer, so it puts it down to an f5.6 at 571 millimeters. We are going to be using, of course, the AM5 that I have on top of the pier that I built for the upcoming observatory. I just need it to cool down so I can actually start building the observatory itself i got everything that i need i just don't want to have a heat stroke out here also going to be using of course my only camera i have is a zwo asi 2600 mc pro inside of here of the zwo electronic focus wheel going to be using the optolong l ultimate which is a three nanometer band pass of hydrogen alpha and oxygen three controlling with the asi air plus the 256 grip version that still has the tf card Guiding, we'll be using the SV Bonnie 60 millimeter uh, guide scope and using my planetary camera, the ASI 174mm. Now, since last night I did capture it with the hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 filter, I mean, I could have really tonight throw in my Ascar D2 to get. O3 and S2, but I really like this target just as a normal HOO with just the hydrogen and oxygen. It's just a matter because it doesn't really look that good in SHO and the Hubble palette. So we're going to be continuing to get some more data on the Crescent Nebula tonight. I'm going to get roughly probably about 14 hours worth of data and this should really look quite nice. We're about two hours from sundown, so we're going to go ahead and wait and get ready to get our images sequence ready to go. 
and for a nice night of sleep because even tomorrow night we're expecting clear skies yet again but definitely temperatures are going to be significantly higher and in fact probably tomorrow night we're going to be looking at lows in the lower 80s so i'm not even sure that my dark uh my dark uh library it's going to cool enough for negative 10 celsius so i might have to dip down to negative five so it hasn't really got that warm in the overnight hours as of yet, but I might have to start that dark library now since we're entering the heart of the summer season here. All right, now it is the next day after collecting two nights of hydrogen alpha and oxygen three on the crescent nebula we have roughly about 12 to about 13 hours worth of data i've already stacked it within PixInsight, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here and already got some beautiful detail and i'm actually still very surprised with a full moon we got a lot of oxygen around the outside of the Crescent Nebula in itself. And if we go a little bit further down, you notice the soap bubbles there too. So this is a great start off right off the bat. So first thing we're gonna do is some um, background extraction with the Graxpert tool. Smoothing factor about six. Go ahead and let that run. All right, we did some background extraction. Go ahead and do some blur exterminator on the image. All right, did some blur exterminator. That's already looking tremendous detail there in the center. Now we're going to do a little bit of some denoise with the Graxpert denoise. Run that through. All right, we run our denoise. Let's go ahead and do some... SPCC. I only like to do this especially when I'm only working with uh, hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 since there is a preset for this already just to kind of get the colors already aligned with the L ultimate filter. Go ahead and run that over. Okay so we have done color calibration. Let's go ahead and begin stretching our image. We want to Bill Blanchin's link stretch let that run through and already that looks phenomenal lots going on here we even got some oxygen arcs all the way up here as well but everything else looks great soap bubble looks really good so let's go ahead now and start working on a little bit of sun nebulosity and color run the star exterminator so we can take the stars out all right, stars have been removed. Go ahead and stick that off to the side. I'm actually going to rename it first. This is a really rich target, especially with the stars out. You can definitely see the individual details of this, and I'm really loving that oxygen. Soap bubble, a little bit further down. Nice and clear. We even got some dark nebulae going on here in the background as well. Next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of some sharpening. Use the utility advanced sharpening. There we go. Looking fantastic. Let's go ahead and work on some of the hydrogen alpha. Go and use the color mass mod. Pick a little bit of the reds where it looks good. Looks like it's about right in the center. Go ahead and run that. Put our mask through there. High in the background. With some curves transformation. I'm going to bring up the saturation. 
little bit of some red. Don't want to go too overboard with the reds. Yeah, even right there looks pretty good. Now I'm going to work on the oxygen that's around the outside of the Crescent Nebula. I'm going to do the same thing. Color Mass Mod. I'm going to zoom in here and get to where my greens are. So it looks like I have a little bit of some cyan and some greens in the mix here. So I'm going to try and tolerate it as best as possible. Because we do have some... Oh, jeez. Gotta love, love, gotta love living in a country. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and increase a little bit of the saturation. I'm going to zoom in here. Add some blue. I don't want to go too overboard with it. May have added a little bit of some SCNR. There we go. So it looks more of a blue instead of a green. Looks okay. Go ahead and get rid of that mask. Do another range mask. Just to kind of do a little bit of some contrast. There we go. A little bit more. You can also mess with the RGB curves. <clears throat> Something that looks like that. Pretty satisfied with this image so far. So let's go ahead and rename this as Starless. We'll go ahead and open back our stars. And the easiest thing I like to use is correct magenta stars because it gets rid of the green in the hues and in the invert as well. Go ahead and run that. Perfect. So let's go ahead and combine the image with our Pixinsight script. There we go. Mess with the histogram just a little bit. Darken the background just a little bit more. There we go. Nice and satisfied. What a beautiful image. I love this region, especially when there is like a full moon. Because even with uh, just a regular narrowband filter, HA and Oxygen 3, you can get a wonderful image like this. And just look at the detail of the inside of the Crescent Nebula itself. Even though it doesn't really look like a so-called crescent, it kind of looks like a brain. So I nickname it the Brain Nebula, but... It's called the crescent or even the kidney because it looks like a kidney as well. So this is what we're left off with with just two simple nights in the middle of summer. Temperatures of 100 degrees during the day and temperatures in the 80s at night. So thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. Still getting very close to 1,000 subscribers. We do have memberships as well. So if you wanna have access to all the data that I have for any of the videos I post that you can work with in PixInsight too. And I have plenty of tutorials as well that help you process a lot of these images. So thank you all once again. 
clear skies, and I will see you in the next video.